All right, thanks for tuning in to another edition of the Prime Sports Horse Report, which is seen on, of course, the uh, <coughs> Horsepower PSN YouTube channel and also on Patreon. So uh, if anybody out there still has not subscribed to Patreon, we have a link in the description, $5 a month. Uh, and if uh, for some reason you can't do that, check, uh, check here at YouTube whenever we do post the videos. Subscribe because we want to reach 1,000 subscribers. The sooner we reach 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, we are going to make a pretty big transition where we're going to provide a lot of the videos for free on YouTube. We're still going to have some special videos on Patreon that you'll have to pay for, including a special that uh, I've been mentioning here for several months. Uh, Chad and I will talk about this actually in, a, in about a week, and uh, we'll have maybe a little bit of a surprise and a good surprise about, and hopefully I'll see you too, John. Uh, I, but how often are you up, uh, as I introduced John Harduna to the show, John, how often are you up in the East Coast compared to the West Coast? Zero West Coast, one <laughs> East Coast. I, why did I always think that you had like a West Coast residence? For 22 time? years, I was on the West Coast, but okay. I'm back on the East Coast four right. times. Good for you. Uh, so, yeah, so I'll see both of you guys when I'm uh, up in New York in a few months. And anyway, we'll alert everybody to that. But before we get started, I also want to uh, introduce our, uh, our resident horse trainer, Chad Summers. How's it going, Chad? It's going well. It's going well. How's the stable? Um, everything is uh, everything is copacetic. All right. Very nice. Good to hear. Uh, we also want to update. Uh, from our viewers matter of fact we have a new uh patreon member greg gensler uh didn't have time last week uh, so we want to mention him greg gensler our newest patreon member welcome uh to uh horsepower psn and we also have some uh youtube comments questions uh let's uh first uh bring in uh what brian mccarthy had to say i love this game and also the kentucky derby but because of the unrepairable damage Churchill Downs has done, I will only bet Churchill on Derby Day and never spend a dime at any of their properties. And what's interesting is, is uh, do we had a, actually had somebody that had like a, a counterpoint to that, um, Shane Tobin. Uh, I'm not sure if this is exactly a counterpoint to what Brian said, but Shane says Churchill Downs is doing the correct thing by protecting the integrity of the sport, period. For any person, handicapper or trainer, complaining about Churchill Downs, protecting the horses is ridiculous. All the drug violations that are going on in the sport needs to be dealt with, period. What about those two comments? Well, well first of all, the last guy that made a comment is you could what he's saying is true however if you give somebody a penalty and they pay the fine that's it case closed the uh, churchill just added a year suspension for uh, to, to bafford for no reason they gave him a penalty he fulfilled the penalty you can't move the goalpost you know you get you get a ticket you go to court you pay the ticket and then when you get there the judge says well i'm going to make it a hundred dollars more you can't do that I'm not, I'm not here to defend Baffert in any way, shape, or form. But he served his suspension. Time to move on. That's all I'm saying. Chad, you're awfully quiet. It's a, it's a slippery slope. Look, I think there's a, there's a lot of moving parts. I don't think there's a, a right or wrong answer. I think there's a lot of things in this industry collectively that need to be addressed, that need to be looked at. Unfortunately, it's not a black and white issue. Uh, both, both viewers make make good points, uh, and both are, are, are open for discussion. And I think there needs to be, you know, a forum every every month, every week, you know, about this about this topic of conversation. I like it. At some point, when things finally settle down, and we get through the the triple crown portion of the races, or you know, we have time in between the Triple Crown races, you know, that we can make a standalone live episode of this and have a genuine back and forth with, with all of our, our, our listeners and, you know, bring some guests in and, yep. and things of that nature. But, I mean, at this point now, you know, you have to just take the Derby for, for what it is, take the races for what they are, and, and this is the situation that we're in. And, you know, we can really just – don't have to look past the mirror to, to really see and, and focus in on the situations as to what's going on. And um, there's reasons why we're in this boat. And so we have to address them as, 
as we see fit. But, you know, I don't think now it, it's, it's difficult to give an abbreviated uh, answer. Maybe people will say it's the, it's the easy way out, but, um, Chad, you know, if they give you a penalty and you serve the penalty, that's it. Case closed. You want to throw him out next time he does something? Fine. Throw him out for life. But here's, if he here's, gave here's, him here's, out, here's, here's the thing, though. When new evidence comes to light, then new evidence comes to light. And I, I don't think that every, everything is out there in the open that's known of what CDI, it, it, specifically regarding the backward situation. So, look, I, I understand your point. I understand many handicappers' points, many um, trainers' points. I just I think there's there's more to it that we don't know. Who are they hurting by leaving the Baffert horses off the out of, out of the Derby? Who are they hurting? They're hurting. Who are they hurting? Baffert. They're hurting the game. They're Baffert. hurting. You Baffert. think Baffert cares? I don't yes. think he cares. Yes, okay. as do our viewers who who brought this point up specifically <laughs> about you. Look, I, Baffert wants the, the only race Baffert cares about right now is the Kentucky Derby. Okay. That's that's where you, that's where your legacy comes from, right? The the, the big races, yeah. I guess. But again, I go back. If they gave you a penalty and you served the penalty, that's it. Case closed. They didn't leave it as an open ended. We'll discuss it in two years. Serve you two years, then you're welcome back. He served us two years. John, again, if, if not you to defend if, if, if you kill somebody and you you got you said okay, you're five years suspended for killing somebody, and then they found out that you killed somebody else. Then it's a new. Then there's a new trial. It's a different case. Correct. Okay, Correct. but they didn't bring up any. They're not telling the public. They Correct. Keep, Correct. So that's stupid. Correct. Okay. All right. We we'll get to work. In a minute. Uh, M Mrs. Stevens, love the passionate back and forth. Uh, did mention this. Pretty embarrassing. You don't know who Forever Young is. That was you, Greg. You didn't know who it was. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's me then. Yeah. Then I, I'm not the expert. I'm the You're host. You're not a horse. Uh, you're yeah, right. You're that's not the me. Here. So, that's, yeah. Uh, keep Chad coming back. And then David Piscopo wanted to hear what Chad was going to say about the vets at uh, Churchill Downs and Forever Young. Then he got interrupted. Damn. So, uh, d uh, Chad, uh, do you want to remember what that was about last week? Yeah. yeah. Go, go right ahead. Look, I think um, in the eyes of social media, which we are very much in now, um, if you go back to last year with Forte, and then there's some Breeders' Cup stuff too with Archangel, but, but specifically with Forte, Forte ended up <clears throat> kind of getting on everybody's list uh, when the social media doctors saw that he took a stumble uh, in a routine gallop. You know, once you get to Bel uh, to the Churchill Downs, there's all those cameras, all eyes. You know, there's breakfast with the works all week. All the horses' gallops are scrutinized by all the so-called experts. And everyone decided that the horse had an issue. Well, my thing is, having watched Forever Young train for three and a half, four weeks in Dubai when he left Saudi Arabia, he trains um, with a, a interesting gait, would be the kind way of putting it. And he looks far worse than Forte ever looked, in my professional opinion. And I feel like I've been a part of this industry for long enough that I can make that claim. And, and so I'm interested to see what the vets and the social media experts are going to say when they watch Forever Young train every day um, because it's not pretty. Now, again, and, and I do have to say this with, 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 with quite certainty, okay? American Pharaoh could not jog, okay? If, if, if Hissa and Hiwu and social media yeah, was around, 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 around then, and American Pharaoh was around, I don't know that he wins a triple crown, and there was nothing wrong with him. That's the way. That's the way he's made. He galloped beautifully, he breezed beautifully, won the triple crown, but he couldn't jog. Archangelo was the same way, and all of a sudden, Archangelo ended up getting scratched from the Breeders' Cup. So, to me, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with Forever Young. Okay, this is not. This is not saying that there's a problem with Forever Young. This is the way that he travels, and it's going to be interesting to see if people have a problem with it or not. But this is. This is the way that he traveled in Japan, you know, quietly when nobody's around. How he was in Saudi Arabia when nobody paid attention. And now he's been in Dubai, which nobody seemed to care about. Will this change once he gets to Churchill Downs where everything is scrutinized? I think the answer is yes. But we'll we'll find out and we'll see. All right. That was uh, definitely an interesting uh, take. So let's go ahead and we'll follow up for sure uh, in a few weeks. So let's just wrap up a huge uh, three Kentucky Derby prep uh, weekend 
And starting with uh, Chad's uh, pick in the wood, Resilience, getting it done. Uh, what do you think about Resilience' effort in winning the wood? And what does that mean for Resilience in the Kentucky Derby, if anything, in your opinion, Chad? Look, I thought he was the best horse in the wood. I thought everybody was giving the flowers to deterministic way too early on a horse who ran two career starts would beat a suspect field in the Gotham. Um, looks like I was right. I hope they do the right thing and don't run in the Derby, but they haven't made any any decision yet. Um, Who's I that? Was, who, was who? Which one? Deterministic. Okay. I, I think Resilience was was the best horse on the day. I thought he was good with the blinkers. Um, if anything, moved a little too early uh, and got a little lost out there once he made the lead. But it was good to see. Um, ultimately, I don't think he's in the same class as uh, Sierra Leone or Fierceness or some of the better horses. So um, good effort. Um, did what he was supposed to do. Horse on the improve, lightly raced still. Uh, he's a horse that I, I, I look up forward to him improving in the second half of his three-year-old year, but I don't think that he's necessarily ready to win the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, and, yeah. and by the way, for a jockey, I imagine it's going to be Junior Alvarado. By the way, he ran a nine. Okay. There. So that was, uh, and and his, what was his previous high was an 11. Um, oh, he's going the right direction. Every start has gotten better and better. Uh, by the way, the, yeah, because again, we can draw a line through the sloppy, sloppy <coughs> race. Uh, and then, and now, by the way, uh, something that we have to mention and something that John, I'm sure, loves, uh, the Daily Racing Forum has decided that they went faster in the Risen Star seven weeks after they ran the Risen Star. So uh, Sierra Leone was uh, upgraded five points. Wow. Resilience was upgraded. All these other horses were upgraded because seven weeks later, the race is faster, which is the dumbest thing ever. Your, your, your number is your number. You should not be able to change your number. What do you think, John? I agree. The sheets on occasion will They're move just, a, a horse. Uh, maybe a point tops. I mean, they, they uh, went up five well. points because they looked at the race and they said the winner won, came back and won the second place. Like, I mean, come on, that, that yeah, shouldn't that's, work. Yeah, that's not right. Ridiculous. By the way, the two two of the favorites in the wood, deterministic and Tuscan Sky. Tuscan Sky had both only had two races uh, to their resume, so it just shows you experience counts. Okay, and then speaking of Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone did it again, uh, coming from behind. Uh, to run, run down just a touch uh, and uh, win the Bluegrass Stakes. Uh, so first off, um, John, what did you think about uh, the Bluegrass Stakes? Well, first of all, he ran an eight, which was a very, which was the best race he's ever run so yep. far, and it was very impressive. The track was certainly favoring speed. The horse was breaking from an impossible post. And I don't think the horse was squeezed, and he still ran that good. So he's obviously one of the two main, or one of the few main contenders on Derby Day. Look, your concern, your your concern from the race is just his antics before the race. Yeah, right. Jeez. you don't see. You and don't that see was the that. thirty. That was with thirty thousand people there. What happens with one hundred fifty thousand people on Derby Day? You don't see Chad Brown horses not going the gate like that either. That was um, that was a little bit of a surprise, and it's not something that. I remember him having any incidents, having a problem with before. But you know, if you look at his, if, if you look at his record, he's literally done nothing wrong. He was against the bias when he got beat by Dornock. He's he's a head away from being undefeated, and he was the best horse that day, as John said, over and over and over again. Uh, very talented horse. The question's going to be: We know his running style, and in the Kentucky Derby, when the best horse doesn't always win, could this compromise him that he has to come and? He's going to have to pass them all. I mean, probably. I mean, maybe two or three behind him. But I mean, he's going to have to. He's going to have to weed through traffic. And nobody's hotter right now than Tyler Gaffleyone. I, I don't think you know you'd want to trade places with any other jockey than him. He's got all the confidence in the world in the horse. But um, that's that's going to be your question. You know, do you want fierceness as the one who's going to be more forwardly placed, or do you want Sierra Leone, who might be a little bit better but needs to pass them all? Right now, how would you put the odds for the Derby between those two? I'd put them both. At, I'd put them both at three to one. Okay, so in the future book, in the future book, <laughs> is six to five. The last book that closed and well, Sierra, me... six to five, and cool. Sierra Leone is seven to one. Huh. Seven to one. Yeah, it's too late. You can't get that price. When was that? that? Was the last book that closed oh, two weeks. A couple ago. weeks ago. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, and I wanted to ask you because, uh, Chad, you mentioned the doorknock. 
you said that you you were wondering whether or not they, they because they were in the derby, they had the points, whether or not you thought that they, they would try something new strategy they did. wise. So it work. <laughs> yeah. So uh, talk a little bit about that, uh, just in case anybody didn't uh, catch. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, the the way the point system is set up is interesting. I mean, the the problem is it feels like the University of Kentucky basketball team, which obviously is in the news, where they didn't have to win the SEC tournament. They were messing around a little bit against Texas A and M. They got beat. Then they went to round one and they got beat by a guy who works at Foot Locker. To to me, okay, so they they try to take door knock off the pace. It didn't work. Now you say, okay, well, we're going to put them on the engine. Well, now you're coming in this race off two less than ideal prep races. Um, You have to run the best race of your life. And you want to be forwardly placed against a horse like Fierceness, who also wants to be forwardly placed against other horses who want to be forwardly placed. Now you're depending more on the draw. You're, it, it, it's, it's changed the dynamic of things. And to me, um, it's not, it's not heading in the right direction of where you want to be. You know, you're in the Derby. That's great. That's the goal. I kind of felt that way about running the Dubai world cup. Hey, we made it. We're in the race with Clapton. And, and in hindsight, looking back, we shouldn't have been in the race because we didn't, we, we weren't competitive and we weren't going into the race the right way. And, and I just kind of feel that way about Dornock. He's a talented horse, and, and he's a horse that, that can be anything. His brother won the Derby last year. I just wish he was going into this race with a little bit more momentum. Now, that can change. Look, they're young three-year-olds, and he, he's not geared up to be 100% yet. His, his next two workouts are going to be everything, okay? How he works are going to be everything. So, you know, we'll watch, we'll watch closely. I imagine he'll work in company with Society Man. He's got a he's got a running mate in the race, so Danny's got a a, a partner that he can breeze with. Um, but it's going to be important that he has he has a really really good breeze coming up because I don't think not only did he get beat, but he didn't get enough out of the race. He doesn't have enough bottom on him um, to get ready to run a mile and a quarter off these two off these two prep races. But uh, look, I thought Danny's done a good job getting him here, and and we'll see we'll see how he prepares him now over the next month. Yeah, I, I, because I got to remember the Remsen win, which was such a gutsy win after Sierra Leone had uh, passed them, and then it, that that shows Look, a lot gonna, of you're guts. You're going to be rewarded. Uh, you listen, everybody's given up on him, so he's a horse that'll be twenty to one on the morning line and drift, right? So if you if you want to go back to the well, yeah, I, I think, and you tell me I'm wrong, John, you're you're going to get every bit of thirty forty to one on the horse. No, no way. No one's thirty or forty to one anymore in the Derby. Not well. Since- somebody's going to be six to five. Somebody's going to be forty yeah. to one. Okay, I don't think it'll be forty to one. It'll be more like fifteen to one and above fifteen to one, which is fine. Yeah, he'll be a good bet. price no matter what. So yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think forty to one, but probably more closer to fifteen. I think he's twenty to one morning line. Okay, and, and then in the Santa Anita Derby, it was Stronghold beating Imagination. That was a really nice stretch duel between the two. Uh, what did you think about Stronghold's win, uh, guys? J- starting John. It was a short field. He was the one. There were two. It looked like a two horse race, and they ran it like a two horse race. And uh, he ran. In, he also ran a nine. By the way, I'll okay. tell you what. Fra- Frankie Dettori had gone into the race winning six races in a row on the day, looking uh, for a seventh win on a three to five. Seventh win on the card. <laughs> and Antonio Frezu wow. wanted it just a little bit more. And the by the way, he won six in a row and then had to sit out the seventh. He just sat. He had no mount in the seventh race. It's like when you have a. a Play yeah, you don't. You never want to take time off when you're on a roll. So, all right. But I think uh, the emotion. Listen, the emotion that we saw from Antonio Fresu, a good friend of mine. Uh, so happy for him. Happy for for Phil Damato, a guy that I I've worked with before, an old roommate of mine. Happy for Antonio. Um, it's good when good people win races, and and I'm happy that they're going to get a chance to to compete in the Kentucky Derby and. Look, he's not without a chance. I, I think people aren't giving him enough credit because he's a little too slow, but that nine on, on the sheets is good. It was raced before, I think, got a good number, too, in the, the Sunland race. I I think this horse is better than people are going to give him credit for. It. Maybe he's the, the under-the-radar horse as we get closer to the Derby. Yeah, he had a 10. I will say this. Imagination uh, is one of a few horses um, that, that – it's going to be tough for the Derby winner to win the Preakness because Bob Baffert – by by whatever circumstances they are, they are what they are. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be loaded in the Preakness. He's yeah. got move. He's going to have imagination. We'll see what happens with Nisos if he comes back. Is, he already said Nisos is not going to the, to the Preakness. <coughs> so, Baffert's you know, going to want to spoil the party. He's going to have two or three fresh shooters 
in the Preakness Stakes waiting, licking his chops. Yeah. And you know he doesn't want to let there be another Triple Crown. Winner. That's right. All right. So let's get to this week. Now we're going to go two with the Keeneland uh, card. But before we do that, I just want to get your take on the Oakland race, Oakland Park race. Now there's the grade one, the Apple Blossom. But the one I wanted to get your take on, uh, unless you have a take on the Apple Blossom, is the grade three Count Fleet Sprint Handicap. Uh, because there are some really good horses uh, in this race. Uh, it's a nice little battle here. Uh, you, you've got the, the four Skelly, who has uh, who, who has six wins out of nine on a fast dirt track. His last seven races in America, he hasn't trailed by the by the halfway point. Uh, so that's and he ran a four his last time out at Oaklawn. Uh, and then you also have Jackson Traveler, a seven to two shot. Uh, you have a uh, rivet who's coming off a six, a couple of starts ago. Uh, and maybe the most intriguing one. Oh, and you also have Tato twist. Uh, please. I, I don't want to skip him. He's got a bunch of single digits, uh, but he's zero for two against, uh, Skelly. The, the, the horse though, John, uh, that really pops out at anybody that's looking at the sheets is happy as a choice, uh, going off at 20 to one. Yeah. I mean, he's the horse with the most recent fastest figure and he's the longest shot in the race. The problem with Skelly is he's been to Dubai and back. Saudi, uh, Saudi. Saudi and back, I'm sorry. So the only one that's done that is besides Chad is this horse. It's kind of close to come back, I think, running on February 24th. I don't think he has enough time. He's even money. I would try to beat him, and I would key your horse happy as a choice if you get anywhere near 20 to 1. Uh, I agree. Eight was six and seven in there, and obviously reversing. Yeah, I would go eight uh, with four and two. Uh, but that's only because of uh, Skelly is so good. But yeah, uh, definitely have to have that eight coming off a of five last time out at Oaklawn at six well, furlongs. Chad, who do you like in this race? Under, you guys don't understand class. Like that horse is coming off an allowance win. Okay, he's won two allowance races. Well, that's why he's he twenty beat, to one. He beat yeah. He beat, <laughs> he, he beat nothing. If he wins, he wins. But I mean, he's running against legit serious horses. You're betting him because of the price. That's the only yeah. reason you're betting him because he's I don't look at odds. I don't, I'm not looking at odds. I'm just looking at class. And the bottom line is, these horses have have, have beaten each other up. I mean, these are some good, hard knocking quality horses. And I don't know that Happy is a choice is ready for. Who do you I'm like? That too. We'll find out. Who do you like, Chad? Um, you know, I was disappointed last time in Rivet. I thought Rivet was going to run a better race. I know Flavian Pratt gave the best ride ever to Jackson Traveler, and I understand Skelly is Skelly. And uh, Asmussen has brought horses back from the Middle East with with success before. He's done it with Gunite. He's done it with Curlin. Um, so obviously. You know, he thinks the horse is ready. This has been their plan all along, was to go to Saudi, not go to Dubai, uh, and come back and make the count fleet because they think he loves Oakland Park. I mean, he's run eight times there with six wins. Um, so I, I'm going to pick Asmussen to win the race. Yeah. Whether it be Skelly, <laughs> Jackson Traveler, or uh, Rivet, I don't uh-huh. know. But I'll, I'll, take, I'll take Rivet as the longest shot of the three. I'll take Rivet to, to slightly upset the apple cart. Well, I mean, that could have been a bounce because he ran the six. Rivet is fine. Rivet could win. Yeah. Uh, don't forget, it. Rivet could certainly win. So that's, uh, yeah. And he's only four years old. So, yeah. Rivet, happy choice. Hopefully they'll get in the money there and uh, make us happy. Uh, but So, did, did either of you have anything on the Apple Blossom before I turn our attention to Keeneland? It's a great race. It's a great race. Look, I mean, Wet Paint's supposed to win the race, okay? Um, making her four year old debut for Brad Cox. She looks like she's grown up from three to four. But Tax did nothing wrong in her in her uh, returns to the races as a four year old. Obviously, sprinting wasn't what she wanted to do, and she won anyway. Um, but the horse that interests me the most, and I, obviously, look, Adair men are nine to five for Baffert, but uh, she has lost the two times uh, that she shipped out of um, out of California. So I don't really love the nine to five on her. Uh, the horse I like at a big, you talk about a price. What about 20 to 1 on the number five horse, Flying Connection? This was a horse we kind of um, liked a little bit in the, in the Kentucky Oaks. She ran six that day at a distance that was a little bit further. I mean, it's this distance here, but um, I think she's kind of maybe more mature now that can handle this race. Um, since since then, she came back, and uh, she looks like she's just gotten better and better. Uh, she's been at home in New Mexico, but, but comes over here for this race. She shipped over early. She's been here since the beginning of March. Uh, she has three works over the track, which I love to see. And she's a quality filly that should not be 20 to 1. I'm sorry. That, that's, a, that's a disrespectful price to me. 
more so than the 20 to one in the account fleet flying connections should not be 20 to one for Todd Fincher, who of course is a trainer of senior Buscador. That's who it is. Senior Buscador. By the way, uh, flying connection ran a 12 last time out. Wet paint ran a 14 last time out. That was last year. Well, that was the breeders cup. She was a tired. Listen, she was a tired horse. Uh, in the Breeders' Cup last year. I wouldn't hold that last race against her. I, I look back more at what was her number in the CCA Oaks when she was at her best. Yeah, Wet Paint actually uh, has only bettered 12 once. That was a 10. Uh, yeah, I would expect her to look I, I would expect her to look more more like the 10 horse. And, and you talk about horses for courses, she ran three times at Oakland last year and won all three. So, okay. um, you know, she obviously is the horse. For me, she's the horse to beat, even though Adair Manor is the, the morning line favorite. All right, so we'll definitely keep an eye, though, on Flying Connection, the 5, a 20 to 1 shot at the Apple Blossom. By the way, John, what was your pick again in the Oakland? Race 8? Which, race 8? You had, I like the 20 to 1 shot that you like. Did you have an exacto with that? Yeah, 8 with 4, 5, 6. Hold on, four, let me make sure. Five, six. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 8 with 4, 6, 7, sorry. Four, six, 8 seven. with 4, 6, 7. And Chad, who did you have in that one? I took uh, Rivet. Rivet, okay. What is that? What number is that? The seven? Um, Rivet. Go back to it. No, that's the four. She's no, the that's Skelly's yeah, the, the four. Seven. Rivet's the seven. Okay. Yeah, he's the seven. All right, let's uh, go to Keeneland. And before we get to the Lexington, we've got race number nine first. A mile in a 16th race. It's the grade one Jenny Weil. Wiley. Excuse me. The Jenny Wiley. It's a big race. Uh, before the Lexington, and this will go off about five sixteen on Saturday. And you got really, it's interesting. Got the five top uh, morning line favorites are between three to one and six to one odds. Uh, that's how tight this one is. Uh, starting with the two fluffy socks, who's six to one. That's well. Why did you? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Why did you go past the one? Who's I'm not, I'll get one? back to Walkathon. I'm just starting with the morning line favorites. Why you started, fluffy socks isn't the favorite at six to one. No, I'm starting with. I said the morning line favorites are between three to one and six oh, to one. Okay. And so I'm going to start mathematically with the two fluffy socks. I'll come back and run a walkathon. I've got walkathon. I like them. Uh, but anyway, fluffy socks, Chad Brown, one of four in the field, John. And uh, yeah, I mean, you look at this horse, even just compared to walkathon, who's 10 to one. And walkathon looks like he's got, uh, you know, better numbers coming in. But anyway, what about fluffy socks? I think she was better last year than she is this year. She goes off short every week, and it's a short price horse that I would certainly bet against. Fluffy Sox is at least one for her last 12. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. The socks look like bedroom socks. I, I'm, I'm glad it's a sporting thing to do to, to run her this year. Obviously, they could have bred her. She's a homebred for them. Um, and she's always right there. I mean, she's got beat three-quarters of length, a length of three-quarters ahead, a length of three-quarters ahead. She's always right there. But uh, – I, I just I, I I don't know how she's gonna get faster. How she, I mean she I think she's just she's lost a step. Her numbers indicate that she's lost a step. And I know you have Byron Ortiz and Chad Brown, but yeah. I, I don't I don't prefer her over some of the other Chad Brown horses in the race. That's six years old. All right, and then uh, staying within this uh, group here, uh, next up uh, we've got the five English Rose at nine to two. Appleby, uh, the two starts here. We've got a ten and a nine. Uh, so this, so uh, I mean, this has danger written all over, uh, over it, uh, John. When when you're coming in with Appleby, one of the favorites of the race, ten and a nine. Yeah, this this horse looks like he's going to be tough to beat. Well, he's my top. She's my top selection, and the reason being, with all the rain that they're going to have by Saturday, the course is going to be heavy and boggy, and this horse, you know, could handle it. So to me, that gives this horse a big edge, and obviously. Appleby and Buick, uh, they're deadly. So, uh, and I don't believe nine to two, but that's that's what they put this horse down as. I don't believe those odds. I think she'll be much shorter, but I think she's clearly the horse to be. How do you, how do you like this stat? The last eight horses that Charlie Appleby has brought to North, first time North America, he's sixty two percent with a two seventy eight ROI. I yeah. mean, it's it's pretty sick. Look, let me tell you about this filly. Um, she seems to be William Buick's nemesis. Um, he won on her last year and then he came back and rode her in the grade two and got beat by his stable mate in silver lady so then he goes all right i'm gonna ride silver lady back uh so he rides silver lady the next time and gets beat again this time this philly wins with mikhail barzalona um 
she was good last time, but she also had pace to run at. They went they went fast enough early, and and she needs a little she needs a little pace. Um, she's not like behind. She kind of likes to sit in the middle, but she likes to be able to kind of to rally into a little pace. And my only concern in this race, and just kind of looking at it, is I don't see a lot of early pace in this race. Now Buick's coming into Ryan, which is an encouraging thing, and Charlie Appleby will actually be there to put the saddle on himself. He wasn't there last week. Uh, they had a hard luck second in the Shaker Town, where I thought the horse ran really, really well. Um, but to me, she's a nice filly, and they like her a lot. Uh, but I think that she, she'd she prefer to run undercover and make one run, and I don't see enough speed in here to set it up for her. I just did an update on the uh, weather at uh, Lexington, and uh, it's going to be sunny on Saturday. It's going to rain early on Friday, so hopefully everything will be okay by Saturday. Oh, that, then, look, the race will definitely be on the turf, but John's right. Yeah. There's going to be a little moisture in it. There was moisture in it last week already. They were off the turf the last couple of days at Keeneland on Wednesday and Thursday over there this week. So it's um, pouring sure as, there's as gonna, we speak, it's pouring there. There's going to be, there's going to be given the ground, but like I said, I mean, she had a, she had a rabbit in the last two races. People don't pay attention because there's no gambling there. Um, but I was there. She had a, she very much had a predominant rabbit uh, in both races. So uh, I just, I think she'd like to get uh, some help here. And Chad Brown um, with the football team that he has assembled in this race with four horses um, I don't think he's going to try and help him out at all. Uh, one of the other favorites, matter of fact, I believe this is the favorite, and that is Gina Romantica. 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 Gina Romantica. A three to one shot. This is one of the other Chad Brown horses you were talking about. Two grade one wins, both at Keeneland. So this is definitely a horse uh, to contend with coming off a nine and a seven. The last two starts, the seven was in that grade one win at Keeneland in October, John. Yeah, she was last seen in the Breeders' Cup miles, so she hasn't been out since November. Obviously, out of the horses, out the the uh, domestic horses, she's the horse to beat if she comes back running, but she's going to be a short price. Listen, I would use her. I would never key off of her, but uh, again, it's Chad Brown, always dangerous, and the horse certainly likes this course, and she's good. She's fine. The ironic, thing, the ironic thing about this horse is the two times she won the grade ones at Keeneland, she wasn't set off as the favorite either time. She was actually – she was 4-1, to 9-2 to two in the QE2, and she was 11-1 to one in the first lady. So um, she's she's been a horse, and she's well-bred, obviously, half the gift box. Uh, to, to me, I just – I don't think that she's been the barn's favorite. I know she's shown up in the past, um, and she ran really, really well in the Breeders' Cup mile. But that race so far hasn't come back with the rest of four. Master of the Seas, okay. Maj ran a third and retired. Casa Creed was just kind of so-so when he ran back in Dubai. You know, all these horses look like they might need a race. I, I'm i not sold on Gina Romantica. And then three to one in a race where I think they're head bobs apart from each other. I'm going to try and beat Gina Romantica. Okay. And then we also have the seven to five to one shot. First race this year as well. Last race was in December. Five races, all between 12 and 14 on the sh- as far as the sheet numbers are concerned, John. Four wins out of five. What about this other Chad Brown horse? At five to one, I don't want any part of her. I mean, she's no faster than four other horses in the race that are a lot longer prices. So. The thing that's amazing about this, Philly, again, talking about Chad Brown, I've never seen a Chad Brown horse who's run five times and never been sent off as the favorite, and that's this Philly. So uh, she and led she a one two favorite Saturday either. So. When she ran in the matriarch last time, that it was the Chad Brown Superfecta. They were one, two, three, four uh, in the race, which was pretty cool. Uh, he seems to dominate the, the matriarch. And look, she won at Keeneland. She won the Valley View for three year olds uh, two starts back last year. She's a nice horse. I think she does have a win over a yielding track and a second on a good track, which is good to know if there's going to be given the track. Um, but I'm going to try and beat her as well. All right. And then uh, the last of the favorites, uh, Didia, the nine horse, is uh, coming in off a nine last time out. Uh, that was in January at Gulfstream Park. Been in a lot of big races over the last five. Ten out of 15 wins, which is really good, obviously. The distance also, four for four. But no grade one wins. And a six-year-old, Didia, four to one, John. She has a grade two win. She ran second in grade one. You know, off of the numbers, she's a must-use. She never runs a bad race, so why wouldn't you use her? This filly has a new owner, and she was purchased in part by John Stewart, the John Stewart that is uh, self-proclaimed the greatest horse owner in the history of life. 
Um, so he probably thinks she can't lose, so I'm going to bet against her. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, now let's go to the rest of the field of the horses uh, that uh, should be in contention, including let's go back to that one walkathon and walkathon to 10 to one shot. What's good about walkathon is you can see early in uh, uh, his career, 19, 14, 11. Uh, then the second year, you see, you, you see him bouncing after the 11 to a 15 comes back with an 11 this year, 13, 11. So, um, the only thing is, he's getting a little older, but still only five. You're getting 10 to one. So what about putting Walkathon in your exotics, John? I'm using her underneath. She's going to be a big price. She'll be every bit of 15 to one. And uh, if Leperu minds his business and stays inside, he could certainly suck up and get in. And I think he, look, he's tactical, Leperu, where he can kind of work out a trip with her. Maybe she, she finds herself on the lead walking the dog does walkathon and julian leperu very underrated as a front running jockey he's very good when he makes the lead so um she's certainly one that 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 is an interesting horse i don't think on a firm f a track in a, in a in a deep field i don't think she's the most talented horse in the race but tactically um i think she she's a must use but i i don't i don't think she's the most talented horse in the field all right uh the three is an eight to one shot elusive princess coming off a 13 last month in tampa best race was a 10 at keeneland and that was in october in that grade one race uh what about uh, the eight to one shot elusive Pr uh, princess john she's like other horses in the race i don't particularly like her look she was a three-year-old last year she's turned four now um, she came over to this country from France, and she ran in the Saratoga Oaks Invitational. If you're worrying about a boggy track, John, remember yeah. when this really won the Saratoga Oaks, it was raining so hard. They canceled the races after her race. They rescheduled the, the boys' race so Chad Brown can have a better shot the next week. At, at the end of the day, um, she likes a soft turf. Um, she loves a soft turf, and, and I think she's maturing. I think Arnold Delacour is a really, really good trainer. I'm going to make her my top pick here at 8-1, to one. And, and, and she's a horse that I think can improve uh, drastically. I think they gave her the race last time. I thought she ran a sneaky good race that day um, in the in the Hillsboro when everything was kind of a weird, wonky day in Tampa, uh, as John clearly remembers about the tote problems. But, but I think uh, at the end of the day, for me, this is a filly that we don't we haven't seen the best of yet, and I think she's going to get better and better. I'm looking forward uh, to to watching this filly here at a little bit of a price, Elusa Princess for the hot riding Junior Alvarado. Yeah, because if you look at the last three races last year, 17, 12, 10 was heading in the right direction, and then had a lot of time off between the 10 and then the 13. So maybe another step in the right direction, and you're getting a solid number at eight to one. Uh, all right, and then uh, the only other horse to horses to mention probably are Star Fortress, the eight at fifteen to one with uh, Saez on board, and Butte Cache, a fifteen to one shot, coming off an eleven last time out at Del Mar. Um, you interested in either one of those, John? Not really, and uh, that's another Chad Brown horse in the race, Bo Cache, and you're getting Frankie Dettori, always dangerous, but uh, I think the post may get to her. Look, Star, Star Fortress, you do have to mention, okay? Her her first start in the country at Churchill was lights out. She was actually made the morning line favorite in the Pegasus, which she wasn't ready for and was a no-show. When she ran back in the Hillsboro last time, she looked like a winner and just kind of really kind of, you know, didn't finish and was kind of disappointing. Uh, but at 15-1, to 1, getting back to Luis Saez, I, I don't think this horse is impossible to pick. I mean, this horse has a really, 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 really good turn of foot. Um, she's an interesting horse at a big price because she's she's there. I, I don't know what happened last time, but I like the fact that connections move forward. They're very, very conservative connections that don't like to run horses um, unless they're ready. So I like Star Fortress at a price. Yeah, Star Fortress ran the 8 in November in that grade 3 win. Okay, so John picks. 5 over 169. English Rose with uh, Walkathon. Gina Romantica and Didia. Five with one six nine. You can reverse them small. Five with one six Dad? nine. I'm gonna go with the three, elusive princess, right. over the five English rose, the seven surge capacity, the eight star fortress, and the nine Didia. And Greg, I'm gonna go with the five as well, English rose over the one and the three. All, All right. right. Let's now go to the Lexington Stakes. And one last chance for a couple of horses here. 
By the way, the, quickly on the Lexington, they've moved this race back a week. It used to be two weeks before the Derby. It's now three right. weeks before the Derby, which is very, very interesting. That's helps good for them. them. Yeah. It helps, it helps whoever wins. And Look, it's them. good for them moving forward, but it's it's bad for them with horses like Hades and uh, Hades and, and, and Liberal Arts who are coming back very quickly. So what would, you, so what would you rather have then? On, they're forced to come back on two weeks, which doesn't help them. Yeah, what would you rather have, Chet? So then you're saying is you'd rather have the – you want to get into the Derby and worry about everything later is what you're saying. You want that extra week so you can win the Lexington and just get into the Derby. Well, I, I just think it's 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 a philosophy on how you're looking at things, right? Like, uh, if you especially, and, and we might as well just start with Hades and Liberal Arts. They're two horses that were highly regarded going into their last preps, the Florida Derby and Arkansas Derby. You haven't had a chance to breeze them back since that since that race. It was just it was just a few weeks ago. So you don't if know you had, how if they're you had doing. This race on, if you had this race on the radar, you should have never run in the Florida Derby. Well, obviously the race wasn't on the radar, but they, right. they're trying to, to attack the Derby with vigor, and they want to try and get in the Derby. And okay. and I I understand that, but but for me, I, it's difficult. For, unless you can sit there and make excuses from their last two starts, it's difficult for me to sit there to be like, okay, you know, even if they're the best horses in the race, it does. It, it's difficult for them to come back in two weeks uh, and, and travel and ship too. By the way, I mean these aren't horses that ran at Keeneland, right? Oh, Hades ran in Florida yeah. and Liberal Arts ran in Oakland. So they've got to ship, overcome all that. Um, everything seemed to go wrong with Liberal Arts last time. He was rank. He was just, I mean, everything kind of his whole schedule has been all messed up since they canceled the Southwest in the first place. I didn't see this even coming of them entering back in this race. A little bit of a surprise. They do attract Irad Ortiz, but um, I wish I, I would have given them a little bit more time and just lick my wounds and 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 just wait for a race like the Preakness. Uh, Hades, I, look, I mean, they put the blinkers on now. I don't know. I mean, maybe they always wanted to. I, again, if you guys remember after the Holy Bull, I was very much against them just waiting for the Florida Derby. I wish they would have run again in the Fountain of Youth. He was an inexperienced horse that didn't know what he was doing. Now you're going to ship up to Keeneland, where we saw how Chad Brown's horse was behind the gate. I, I don't know that Hades is ready for this kind of uh, this kind of show. And so I, I'm going to be against both favorites uh, over here for those reasons. Yeah, John, uh, the thing that the difference. I agree, I agree with Chad 100%. I'm not using either favorite on any ticket. So, well, yeah, that's true. I'm not using either favorite. Yeah, the, the, the difference that I see as far as the sheets are concerned with those two horses specifically is that at least liberal arts is still heading in the right direction. Whereas yeah. Hades took a backward step. Yeah, but the thing, the thing is when you look at the sheets, and John, you can explain this much better than me, you have to look at the timeline. So even right. if the sheets are heading in the right direction, sure. that's fine. If you if you're running in four to six weeks, Bobby Frankel I know was huge on the sheets, but if they ran then they're heading in the right direction, you had to give them the spacing in between, not come that's, back in two weeks. That's what keeps them going in the right direction. Right. The yeah. problem is when you come back close, they're going to take a step backwards, and that's going to probably be the situation with both of those horses. All right. Uh, let's take a look at a couple of other top contenders as far as the morning line is concerned. Uh, let's talk about the favorite of the race, the five to two shot, the Wine Steward. Uh, you've got Michael Maker uh, training this one, and we haven't seen this horse since October in the in a Grade One race at Keeneland when he ran a fifteen, John. Yeah, I mean, listen, who knows what this horse is going to do? He's got to go two turns off of a layoff. The worst race that he ran last year was around two turns at Keeneland. The sprint races before at Saratoga. And Ellis Park will find. I don't want this horse as the favorite. I mean, I would use him because I'm king someone long in here, and the horse does have a third, two thirteens as a two-year-old, so you have to respect that. But I would never key off of this horse. I would use him defensively at best. I mean, he, he's he's a talented horse. The problem is he got scratched in the Breeders' Cup, and nobody ever figured out why. And, and so, you know, obviously he had some kind of an undisclosed injury. Uh, he looks like he's been working well. I, you you got to like the, the the slew of five furlong workouts for trainer Mike Maker, who's really good at bringing horses back off layoffs, but normally they're back on the turf and not the dirt. And there's a difference um, between getting one ready to run back in a graded stake race on a turf and, and the dirt. But he does come in off one, two, three, four, five, six, six five furlong workouts. So certainly they've been trying to get to the bottom of him, trying to get him fit. 
Um, it's an interesting spot to to bring them back in. They could have waited for the Pat Day Mile. Maybe they run on the Pat Day Mile off of this in three weeks. I don't know. But, uh, no, I'm, I'm with John. Like, you use them. I like him more than the ones that we're running um, because at least he's the fresh option. But I like other. I like somebody else more. The other uh, morning line, uh, well, he's, he's in the bunch, and that's Encino, the eight, the five-to-one shot. Now, Brad Cox, uh, we know how good he is, of course, so he knows what he's doing. But, uh, look, the horse has not run on dirt before. Uh, he's coming off a 10. That was a turf way. And so you're looking at a combination of a bounce and a move from synthetic to dirt. So I'm not sure why we'd like this horse, John. The only reason you can like him is because of Cox. I mean, yeah. he looks like he's bred for turf. He's, at, he's by Nyquist, who all run well on Tapita. So I'm against this horse. I think he's going to be way over bet. Because of Cox, he's five to one morning line. We'll probably go off shorter than that. And at a short price, I would try to beat him. Well, I think the reason I like him is the connections thought enough for him to enter him in the bluegrass. So he was in the bluegrass last week. And Brad goes, look, you can't beat my other horse. Just a touch is a better horse, which he was. He ran second. Um, so this is the better spot. It's a more logical spot. It's the easier spot compared to the bluegrass. And I like the fact that he still continued to fire his son. First, it was Flavian Pratt last week, and now it's Little Rontaru. <laughs> Excel Concepcion still sits in the room. All right. Uh, let's go with the rest of the field. The one secret chat, a 15 to 1 shot, getting Rosario first time. The sheets are nice. They're going in the right direction, but not fast enough at this point. 18, 16, and 15. He's never done anything wrong, but he would need to take a big step forward. Look, the connections turned down a lot of money. Uh, my sources are telling me. After his first ever race, uh, a lot of money. Um, he's a big, beautiful, pretty horse. If this race was any further than a mile and a sixteenth, I would have my concerns. I don't know really, ultimately, how far he wants to run. Um, but he's he's the real deal. He can really run. And he's going to turn a lot of heads. Um, I love Rosario. I think Rosario really fits this horse, uh, and I'm going to make him my top pick here. I'm at I think uh, I think he's a very 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 talented horse. Yeah, uh, matter of fact, uh, this horse in the last two races was the favorite, and now he's getting fifteen to one. We know why, but just interesting to note. Okay, um, another couple of long shots. The three and the four. Three is uh, Dilger and uh, Safi Joseph Gaffleyon combo. You have to respect the twelve to one coming off a of fourteen last time out. That was only a few weeks ago, so we definitely have to worry about a bounce situation here, John. I agree. I don't like the source in this spot. I love the fact this is an Irish bred by Luke De Vega that they certainly thought was a turf horse. He ran on the turf the first two times as he's supposed to, and he ran awful. Then they put him on the dirt. He ran awful. Then they tried him again, and he won. <laughs> so they go, all right, let's run him in a stake race. I, I, I mean, look, <laughs> I, just, I, I think uh, unless somehow the light bulb has really gone on, I don't know. All right, uh, footprint. Now, uh, this is a long shot that I'm gonna I'm gonna put into my my, my picks. Uh, coming off now, he ran a 12 in February, then moved over to synthetic. So I don't wear, I don't really care about that because that was also could have been a bounce anyway. Um, but I'm intrigued also by the fact that uh, he comes out first race, breaks his maiden. Where Keeneland? How long this distance? Last time at Keeneland, last time at this distance, that race. So I like the fact, that, again, only because he's a long shot, John. This is my top pick. Oh, I love there you go. I like it. Yeah. Let's hey, put the one know. and the four together, man. Let's make some money. You found a good one, Greg. This is, this is the right horse here. He ran a 15 top as a two-year-old. He broke through that top two starts back. He bounced last time out. Time for a new top today. And he certainly doesn't mind Keelan, and he certainly doesn't mind the distance. Why not? Were his best two races not the starts two and three back? The two starts back two was starts his best. Back, yeah. He ran right. at 12. With, with what? What? With what? Your Lasix? favorite thing. Lasix. Lasix. Yeah, yeah. Three. Well, three, no, three starts back was the late. Yeah, last time he had Lasix, but that race could have been coming anyway. I'm based, I'm betting him based on his two-year-old line when he ran a 15 in career start number two. Okay. So that 15 is as good as horses are running now as a three-year-old, and he's 10 to 1, and he has the 12. You know, if he was 3 to 1, I wouldn't be betting him. But if he's going to really be anywhere near this price, uh, it's my top pick. Okay. 
Chad, uh, I don't normally see this, so, uh, but again, I don't obviously do as many races as you guys. Uh, but the mile and a 16th, for, you know, right out of the gate and then just goes goes the distance. This is I, I just don't normally see a horse that just out of the gate goes that far and then just never looks back. Not easy to win first out going two turns. He did it. You when, know, he didn't run a great for, number. For he to run two, a mile and a 16th first time out. Look, Ken McPeak doesn't often have them ready to roll first time out. He likes to give them a race. Um, for him to run a mile and a 16th first time out, it means – So that is showed, unusual. Okay. He showed no speed in the morning time. None. So just going to be a waste of time to – to to him. Him. It's and, and this was an interesting race. Look, it was a maiden claimer. It was a homebred. It's a hundred and fifty thousand dollar maiden claimer. So it wasn't you know, something you see every day. It's an unusual race. Keeneland puts their book out early. It was a race that he could have targeted for a little while. Um, but it's interesting. Look, and I, and I know, I know Brian Hernandez is his guy. Uh, but Leperu's had a lot of success on this horse, and I'm kind of surprised that they took Leperu off. Well, Hernandez rode him two starts back when he I didn't. Understand. Get I understand. Okay. All right. Uh, let's also throw in. Uh, well, actually, do either of you guys like the thirty to one shots, the six and the seven? No. Well, ever do it, trying to be, see how many different times he can be mentioned on our show at a hundred to one. I, I just they continue to run the horse. He literally ran last week. <laughs> um, no, thank you. Okay. Hey, at least the sheets are going in the right direction. The sheet numbers. Uh, for both of those horses, but all right. Uh, and then what about the ten? Lucky Jeremy. Now this is an eight to one shot, uh, who started off twenty one sixteen last year, nine in January, bounced to the thirteen, then went on synthetic at in in the Jeff Ruby Stakes race. So if we get a good price with the ten, what do you think about Lucky Jeremy, John? Well, you could certainly throw out his last race. That was synthetic. The race two starts back was the bounce off the nine. This horse is fine. Okay. This horse, I'm using this horse as one of my hookup horses. Okay. This horse is called the never turn down the bag horse. They turned down the bag, and the horse finished third and fifth. Now, the race in the Sunland Derby. What does that mean? Somebody offered him money for the horse, and they turned it down. I'm oh, not okay. going to mention any names, but it rhymes with me. And, uh, <laughs> and look, the, the Sunland Derby two back, Stronghold came back and won the Santa Anita Derby. Uh, a lot of luck came back and won the Mind That Bird Stakes on Sunday. Um, both of them, you know, moving forward with Bright Futures. And, you know, Lucky Jeremy just kind of, like you said, he ran like a tired horse. Uh, the Jeff Ruby Stakes, I thought he was going to run better. But in, in hindsight, endlessly kind of ran away from it. And he just kind of got a – he might not really be a polytrack horse. There's no reason to think that he has to be a polytrack horse. So, um, yeah, he can definitely run an improved race Lucky Jeremy. All right, uh, that is it for the field at the Lexington. So, John, you're going with the four. Footprint, the four with the one, two, and ten in exactors, and reverse them as well. Uh, Secret Chat, the Wine Stewart, and Lucky Jeremy, all with footprint. Four with one, two, ten. Chat. I'll take Secret Chat on top, so the one horse, and I'll use them with the two, the nine, and the ten. Two, the nine, and the ten. So you're both going away from Encino. I like it. All right, and I'm going to go ahead, and uh, I am actually going to take the ten, and I'm going to go ten, one, four, nine. All right, so that's going to wrap it up. Uh, next week, uh, we have – what do we have next week? It looks like we've got a couple of graded stakes races at Keeneland, the Ben Alley and the Elkhorn. Uh, and then at Oak Lawn, you've got the grade two – Oak Lawn handicap, and at Santa Anita, we haven't done that in a while, except of course the big one last week, which I'm not even sure we did. That was the Californian and the Providencia. So, anything of those races ring a bell to you, Chad? That uh, better than the others? Yeah, the Oak Lawn handicap should be a good race. All right, the Santa Anita races are probably five horse. For us, right? <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, though, the Californian is going to set. A, if, if the horses that run in the Californian that sound like they're going to run. Uh, it's going to be quite the show because you got that Mark Ladd horse that won the allowance race by 12. That could be anything. I yeah, that's a really, really nice Bob Baffer horse. So mm -hmm. we'll we'll tune in and see what happens. But uh, selfishly, I'm looking forward to the Oakland handicap. All right. Well, good. Guys, oh, yeah. We have an interest in that race. <laughs> All right, guys. Okay. All right, have a good one, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. See you next week. All right. So let me wrap everything up here uh, with the picks and – uh, back at Oaklawn, where is that race? Here it is. Back at Oaklawn, 
the uh, race number eight that we talked about, Count Fleet Sprint. And in this one, John went with the eight. Uh, Happy is a choice. That's the 20 to one shot coming off of five. Matter of fact, I don't think we mentioned this. The sheet line this year, which is, as you can see on the form, at Oaklawn, at six furlongs, which is this race, 11, eight, five. So that's the reason he's just, if you're a sheet player, it's a must play, which is why John's making it his top pick. I mean, you just can't not bet this horse if you're a sheet player. Uh, the other uh, horses he has, he's got the eight over the four, six, and seven. Chad has the seven, and that's Rivet. And again, as we talked about, the six was in February, bounced to the 11. So uh, he's only four years old, and why not? Uh, I, like, I like the idea of uh, this horse maybe getting a decent price as well. Chad also mentioned the 20 to one shot, the, uh, the five flying connection in the apple blossom. I want to remind you about that. I'm going with the four, uh, Skelly, uh, just because uh, he just looks too good. And, um, well, you know, to tell you the truth, it's I'm probably going to come down to the four and the two, Jackson Traveler, because I, I don't want to take them both. Uh, I'm not going to make any money off of it. So I'll probably decide uh, to take one of the two favorites, Jackson Traveler or, or uh, Skelly, uh, and then throw in the two long shots, or two, not long shots, but one is happy as a choice, of course, and the other is Rivet. So I'm going to play happy as, a, happy as a choice and rivet, and I'm going to hope that I make the right call on either the four or the two. All right, then at Keeneland, uh, we had, first of all, in race number nine, the Jenny Wiley stakes, and John went with the five. Actually, we both went with the five English rows, and John went five over one, six, nine, and then I went five over one and three. But I also like, uh, you know, Chad likes the eight, star fortress i'm going to play the a2 and i was thinking of the nine but i don't know i kind of want more than four to one i don't know if i'm going to get it um but i might decide to throw the nine in there as well but i'm going with the five over the one three as my main and like and i'm definitely going to throw the eight in there as well now uh and then chad is going with the three elusive princess so he's going with uh, you know pretty pretty you know eight to one it's a nice price over the five seven eight nine okay and then in the lexington the one that we just did uh, John is going to go with the four footprint, the ten to one shot over the one two ten. Chad's going with the fifteen to one shot. Secret chat, the one <clears throat> over the two nine and ten. And I'm taking the ten, Lucky Jeremy. In this one, uh, I'm getting eight to one, uh, but I'm also but I'm also going with liberal arts because just look, I like the line still on liberal arts. I know it's the two week deal. But I don't want to give up on liberal arts because I liked liberal arts uh, going into uh, the last couple of races, actually. So I don't I'm not, I just don't want to give up on that horse just yet. Um, hopefully the price isn't all that bad, though. I definitely don't want a heavy favorite after just two weeks off. Um, but anyway, so um, the other horses will be the one, the four and the nine uh, I, well, the nine we just talked about, but the one and the fourth throwing in some long shots there. But what we really want is we want the one and the four. That would be awesome. Imagine the one and the four came in exactly. Let's hit one of those. All right, so that's going to wrap it up. Uh, we'll be back next week. And again, just want to tease everybody with the fact that uh, I'm telling you, this is a done deal. It's just a matter of putting everything together, which I'm working on right now, schedule-wise, with Chad, uh, with John, with our, uh, our new editor, and that is uh, going to New York, uh, following Chad around for the day with the camera uh, should be a lot of fun taking a lot of a lot of video having the editor put it together um, and uh, and then again uh, Chad tipped it off as far as talking about like these really interesting important topics that we were going over in the beginning of the show that we want to save for when we've got the thousand subscribers and we're we're going strong on on, on YouTube there, uh, because again, those types of shows we're gonna leave for Patreon. It doesn't mean that they won't eventually make its way to YouTube, but it's not gonna be like, all right, we're gonna put it on Patreon, and a week later or two days later, we're putting it on YouTube. <clears throat> now, once we do the the switch from from Patreon to YouTube, it'll be all the, all the weekly races will be on YouTube. That's that that'll be the new thing, but then we're gonna save all the special stuff. You know, like these types of really cool things for Patreon members only. And then eventually we'll work our way 
uh, over to YouTube um, in some form. But uh, we'll see. You know, it's going to be a lot of fun putting it all together. Can't wait to go to New York, even though it'll be in the summertime and it'll be hot. But I plan on making a nice, you know, week of it, a few days of it, maybe checking out the Jets at, you know, where are they? Florham Park, going there for the day. So it'll be a fun trip. And as soon as we make it and let you know when it'll be, we will let you guys know. So that's going to wrap it up. Don't forget, look, if you aren't a Patreon subscriber yet, just uh, check it out. It's only $5 a month. And uh, we are also going to always appreciate it if you can't make it to Patreon for whatever reasons. And just uh, hit the subscribe button because that will help us to get to 1,000 subscribers as soon as possible. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.